Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Milwaukee Brewers and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Brewers is Tom Candiotti, whose record is 7-5 with a 4.21 ERA. And pitching today for the Tigers is Bruce Robbins, whose record is 3-4 with a 5.35 ERA. Okay, yesterday, wow, what a great game yesterday. Uh, we won 10 to 7 in the ninth inning. And if you didn't watch this game, I, I almost don't want to spoil it for you. If you haven't seen it, it's worth watching be because the uh, White Sox had a 7 to 3 lead going into the ninth inning. And, uh, Dave Rosema pitched his worst start of the year. He gave up the seven runs, uh, and we took him out early. Bullpen came in, shut everybody down. Ron Kittle had two home runs for the White Sox. And then Buddy Bell, the third baseman for the White Sox, for whatever reason, must have forgot to bring his glove out to the field because he committed two errors. He even got caught stealing in the ball game. Tigers scored four runs in the bottom of the ninth inning. A fantastic comeback, just rallies and rallies, and then and that error by um, the very costly error by Buddy Bell, and we tied up the ball game at seven in the bottom of the ninth. It was great. We went to the tenth inning, and Buddy Bell made another error, and that allowed Ricky Henderson to come up with two runners on, and Henderson hit his seventh home run, walked it off. Dave Rucker got the win. It was a great game, and on top of that. In the seventh inning stretch, we had our grand finale of the robot race uh, for our 2020 season. And, I'm sorry, for 2020 season. For the 1982 season. And uh, uh, the, win the big winner was uh, Jeremiah M. He was the winner of the uh, Rally Fingers autograph photo with Certificate of Authenticity. We're going to get that out to him uh, uh, probably tomorrow morning. So that'll go out tomorrow. And uh, congratulations to uh, Jeremiah. Uh, Douglas B. was the runner-up, and he gets the 1973 uh, Topps Rally Fingers baseball card in mint con near mint condition. Uh, so those are the prizes. We're going to get those mailed out tomorrow. Thanks for uh, checking that out. I hope that was entertaining for everybody. And uh, in the future, we'll do something similar to that, I think. Uh, let's get on with today's game. We'll go ahead and get started. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and or subscribe. If you're new to the channel, we do a lot of other fun things on this channel, including um, sports card breaks. And uh, we have plenty of different playlists you can check out. Uh, here is today's starter, Bruce Robbins. The Brew Crew is batting only 190 against him in 24 plate appearances. So not a big, uh, uh, not a lot of uh, plate appearances to... Uh, to go by there. All of our bullpen is available because we had the day off yesterday. And uh, take a look at the lineup for today. Tom Candiotti, the righty, on the mound. And all of our heavy hitters are in there. We are going to give uh, Dawson the day off, an extra day off. He's coming around slowly. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift the outfield around and put Gibby back in left. Henderson goes to center. And our DH today will be Reggie. Okay. All right. So here is <laughs> the Brewers lineup rundown. Batting leadoff, playing first base today is Bob Scooby. Batting second at shortstop is Ed Romero. Batting third at second base is Paul Molitor. Batting cleanup at third base is Randy Azador. Batting fifth in center field is Chet Lemon. Batting sixth in DHE today is Dave Sachs. Batting seventh in right field is Alan Cockrell. Batting eighth in catching is Charlie Moore. And batting ninth in left field is Doug Lohman. Pitching for Detroit is the lefty Bruce Robbins. Bruce, 3 and 4th at 5.35 ERA, making his 16th start. Uh, Dan Petrie will be back in 29 days, so Bruce has 29 days to get his shit together. 
Take a look at his log here. Uh, he went five and a third against the Yankees, giving up three runs and five hits. He walked four, only struck out two in his last outing. Had uh, two no decisions in a row before getting that win against Baltimore. It's been a tough season for him. We've expected quite a bit out of Robbins and his uh, lively fastball. 95 miles an hour it maxes out at. And it's rated a 93, but he's not really a strikeout pitcher. He did have 8Ks earlier in the season against the Sox. Um, but he hasn't really showed much beyond that. And at some point here, when Petrie comes back, we're going to have to make some decisions. So uh, we'll see if we can't uh, get Robbins straightened out. There is the Tigers' defensive alignment for today's game. Parrish back in there, catcher after having the day off the other day. And Bob Scooby leading off the, the Brew Crew. Uh, is only two home runs behind us in the American League. They have the second most power uh, in the AL as Scooby pops out to third. One down. Here is Ed Romero batting 342 versus lefties. No surprise. He gets a base hit to right. As I was scouting the uh, Brew Crew for this series... I noticed that it said that uh, they use the same lineup versus lefties and righties. So when we go back, oh wow, Paul Molitor shoots it down the right field line. Will it score Romero? It does. And Randy Bass commits an error in the outfield, bobbling it out there, allowing Molitor to go to second. He probably had a double anyway, so maybe it, the run scored on the error as Romero would have been held at third. So that's an unearned run, and it's one nothing Brew Crew. Alzador popping it up on the infield to Whitaker. Whitaker makes the play. So yeah, as I was saying, they use the same lineup versus lefties and righties. So when we see Uger tomorrow, as Lemon grounds out to third, I think we'll probably see the exact same lineup in the exact same order. Okay. Here is the Tigers lineup for today. Batting leadoff and playing center field is Ricky Henderson. Batting second at third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting third at first base is Greg Brock. Batting cleanup and playing DH is Reggie Jackson. Batting fifth in left field is Kirk Gibson. Batting sixth in catching is Lance Parrish. Batting 7th at 2nd base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting 8th at shortstop is Alan Trammell. And finally, batting ninth in right field is Kevin Bass. Pitching for the Brewers is Tom Candiotti. Candy? The, what was his nickname? The Candyman? No, it was uh, Cotton Candy. That's right. That's his nickname. Uh, yeah, so he doesn't have his um, knuckleball yet. He didn't learn that until 1984 after he came back from uh, elbow surgery. So at this point, he still only got his, um, a fastball, which was terrible, and a curve and slider. So he's a, he's a soft tosser. His fastball is listed at 89. Um, it doesn't really reflect it here in his uh, uh, career so far because he started um, his career in our sim, but he walked a ton of batters back in the day. Uh, not reflected here. So his control is a 92, and his command of his fastball is an 83. So I don't know. I guess we'll see how uh, how he does today against the Tigers. He's 12 and 8 uh, last year, 7 and 5 this year, and he's faced Detroit just the one time, and he took the loss, giving up 11 hits in six innings. Okay, so let's see if we can put some runs up on the board against Candiotti. Take a look at the defensive alignment for the Brew Crew. Right field, not so good out there defensively. That's Alan Cockrell. And third base, Randy Azador, both under 80, which is average. In fact, the first baseman, Scooby, is listed as an 80. Okay, here's yesterday's hero, Ricky Henderson, leading off. Ground ball to third. Azador up with it, tosses him out. One down. Next up, Mickey Hatcher. Hatcher's average went up to 333 after going 4 for 5 yesterday. He had a double in yesterday's game. 
lining out to right. Two down. And Greg Brock. Brock Ness Monster pokes his head out of the water. Hits a home run to left center field. His 12th of the year. Team leading 12th home run. That is insane. I wish you could get his average up, but we'll take the power. Two down. And Reggie had a pinch base hit yesterday. Pops out to third. So the game is all tied at one. Thanks to the home run by Brock. And we go to the top of the second with Dave Sachs leading off. Ground ball to first. Brock steps on the bag. One down. Next up is Alan Cockrell. Base hit to right. He goes to the opposite field and it falls in front of Bass. Bass not having a good game so far with the error and that ball falling in front of him. Charlie Moore up next and Cockrell was running on the play. Parrish guns him down. Cockrell speed is only 80. He's two for four on the year. So bad base running there. Maybe it was a missed hit and run. I don't know. And then Charlie Moore bloops it into center field and it falls in for a hit. So all these uh, fly balls to the outfield are finding their hole. Finding a hole as uh, Doug Loman grounds out the short. Four hits now, though, against uh, Robbins. That's a little disconcerting. We go to the bottom of the second. We have Gibby, Parrish, and Sweet Lou do up. Gibby leading it off, popping it up, past the mound, almost right on second base. Play is made by Molitor, one down. Lance Parrish up next. Oh, that might find a hole. Oh, nope. He missed the hole. Two down. And Sweet Lou popping it up as well. Okay, one, two, three inning for Candy Ida. We go to the top of the third. Bob Scooby leading it off. Batting 159 versus lefties, and he walks. He does walk a lot. Uh, well, 39, I guess. He's got three intentional walks. I thought he'd walk more than that. Um, I guess I was wrong. Ground ball by Romero. Travel can't. Get the double play started. We had three double plays in yesterday's game as Scooby beats it out at second. One down, runner in scoring position for Paul Molitor. Molitor crushes it in the left center field. Tracked down by Gibby. Scooby cannot tag up. Two down now for the cleanup man, Randy Ozador. Flying out to right center. Okay, we go to the bottom of the third inning. We've got Trammell leading it off. 3 for 11 in his career against Tom Candiotti. Fly ball into center field. Plays made by Lemon. This, was, uh, this game has started off a little bit like yesterday's game where uh, John Matlack was just in total control. I think the Tigers had three hits through five innings. And then we just started uh, pecking away at him. Henderson drills it right into the dirt in front of home plate, and an error by Charlie Moore allows Henderson to be safe at first. And we're going to send him. Now, Moore's got a good arm, and I know that Henderson's last attempt, I believe he was safe. Yeah, he's 18 for 17. So he's due to be thrown out. Oh, man. Well, it's two down. So a base hit by Hatcher is probably not going to score a run, right? So let's get Henderson into second base. 76% chance. Right down the pipe. And he throws him out. God, dog it. That is so frustrating. Henderson is just, I mean, below, well below average. We go to the top of the fourth. 
Chet Levin leading off by striking out. Only the first K for Robbins. Like I said, he's not a strikeout pitcher. I actually seriously doubt that we'll have more than one pitcher with 100 strikeouts this season. That's going to be Morris. As Sachs walks, two walks by Robbins. Because Rosie's not a strikeout pitcher. Robbins not a strikeout pitcher. Huger not a strikeout pitcher. And uh, Tom Filer is, but um, hasn't accumulated. Well, probably won't accumulate enough innings. Uh, Dave Sachs thinks he's his brother, Steve Sachs. Steals second base. The backup catcher, DH, steals second on Parrish. Little number by Cockrell. Back to Robbins. Robbins doesn't look Sachs back. He throws the first. Sachs advances. So two down, runner on third for Charlie Moore. Moore looking to make up for his error. And an infield single. What a bunch of crap. Two to one. I would have rather have had him hit a triple off the wall than to give up a run on an infield single by the catcher with the other catcher stealing second base. That's a lame. On the other hand, I could have just intentionally walked him to get to the left-hander. So, All right. Loman strikes out. We go to the bottom of the fourth. We got Mickey Hatcher leading off. It's 2-1 to one, Milwaukee. Hatcher flying out to right center field. It always says flies out to right, right? So in my mind, when I read that, I think the right fielder made the play. But in most of these cases, isn't the center fielder the guy that calls them off? I, I don't know if the outfielder is actually getting the, the center fielder is getting the put out or if whoever it says it is uh, gets the, uh, the put out. Brock with the home run, first time up, hits a double into center field. That's six uh, total bases for Brock so far today. He's a one-man wrecking machine. Um, maybe like a wrecking ball, I guess let's try to think of. Here's Reggie. Come on, Reggie. Ground ball the second. That'll move Brock along. So Jackson 0 for 2 now. That's going to bring up Gibby. Runner on third, and a oh no, that's a little bit of a revenge on her own there with an infield single by Gibson, which is at least a little bit more likely than the catcher beating it out, and that was to a crappy third baseman. So I can justify that one conveniently. Uh, so whatever they do, we do. It looks like so far. Got some some binary numbers. Runner on first. Do we send Gibby? Gibby 73. And again, there's two down. So this is the time to do it. And there we go. Gibson gets a stolen base. That's going to give him double digits. 10 out of 18. He did have that horrible series. I guess it was against the Yankees where he got thrown out three times. I guess it could be the White Sox. I can't remember now. Okay, uh, Gibby on second. Chance for Parrish to uh, take the lead. Oh, and he strikes out. All right. We go to the top of the fifth. Uh, Robbins, 71 pitches. Facing the lefty, Bob Scooby. Scooby walked his last time up. And he strikes out this time on a pitch that was six inches outside. Three Ks for Robbins. Ed Romero up next. We're going to pull the outfield in. And there's the walk. I have no idea if Robbins, because Robbins was basically out of base, out of, well, I think he was in the minor leagues by 1982, uh, but his professional career was over as uh, Molitor shoots it to center field. So, like, I don't know if Robbins will improve in the simulation or, I mean, if this is the best it's going to get, I don't, I don't know. Two down, and another attempted steal from Romero, and he's thrown out. Everybody's running in this game. And that's the third out. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Sweet Lou is going to lead it off against Candiotti. Fly ball. 
to center field. There's one out. Next up is Tram. Trammell strikes out on a nice slider from Candiotti. That is maybe his most effective pitch. And Kevin Bass flipping it into left center field. Caught by Lohman. A 1 2 3 inning for Candiotti. We go to the top of the sixth. Randy Azador leading it off. This is uh, this is where we have to keep an eye on Robbins. Doesn't really get through six innings very often. Flies out to center field. <coughs> Excuse me. One down. Next up is Chet Lemon. One for seven against Robbins, but batting 325 overall versus lefties. And there's a base hit to right. Can't keep Chet down. Runner on first. I don't think Lemon will be going. This is this should be a good opportunity for a double play. Well, Sachs goes the other way. Caught on the line by Bass. So runner on first. Lemon in real life, I remember Lemon did not have a lot of speed. Um, yeah, I mean his rookie year he had 13 stolen bases, and I remember as a Tiger. Um, that he just was not really often expected to steal second base. Cockrell flies out to right center, and Robbins goes six. So no, all in all, not a bad performance from Robbins. Let's see if we can get him a victory here. We have the leadoff man up, Ricky Henderson, and he goes to right field. We will not be running this time. No, we're not, we're not going for two. We are going to hit and run. We haven't done that at all today. We haven't really had much of a chance. This is a good guy to do it with. Ground ball to third. Didn't get through. I thought there was... Oh, the er another error by the third baseman. Everybody's safe. Here we go. Brock Ness Monsters up. He's got a double and a home run today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the in-game stats. I mean, he's obviously a player of the game. Uh... And Slunky to hit into a double play. I think he's got it made. 0 2 count, and he strikes out. Oh, on an inside pitch. You know what? That's forgivable. At least it wasn't a double play, which is certainly something that's in the realm of possibilities with uh, Red Jay. And he strikes out on a high fastball. And Candiotti has an opportunity here to get out of this inning with Gibby up. Gibby. Hits a high fly ball to uh, the outfield grasp at short. And that's going to do it. So we're going to the seventh inning. We've got Charlie Moore, Loman, and Scooby up. And that's going to do it for Robbins. 103 pitches. Uh, I mean, one earned run. I mean, that's going to lower his ERA. It's going to look better than probably what it was. And we're going to bring in... Oh, my gosh. We just... Pitch this guy so much. I, I, I we're going to do it anyway. We're going to bring in uh, Capuzello. Oh, uh, no. Let's see. Let me see. You know what? We're going to do this. We're going to bring in Patterson to get Charlie Moore. Everybody's rested anyway. I was going to bring in Lefty Cappy to go th for all three, but Moore's batting over 500 against uh, Lefty. So. We're going to bring in Dave Patterson to get Charlie Moore out. Patterson's been struggling. As, thank goodness Moore lined it right at Hatcher. And now we're going to bring in the lefty, Capazello. Capazello is absolutely lights out. Lefties are batting 169 against him. He has not given up a home run to a left-hander. His ERA is under one. Opponents are batting 209 overall. And Doug Lobin never faced Capazello before, oddly enough. And there's a base hit to left. Oh, there we go. That's going to bring up Bob Scooby. <laughs> Scooby batting 157 against left handers. Will Lobin be going? It's a lefty on the mound. I would love to know what the percentage is. I can't imagine he's going to run. Brown ball to short. Let's turn two. Yes! 6-4-3 double play started by Trammell. 
And we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Parrish is up with Whitaker and Trammell to follow. Parrish is up average versus right-handers is down to 270. He was well above 300 for a good part of the season and now he's just unreliable. We're pushing him down in the lineup. He's got no power and he is in a big slump. Sweet Lou up next. Sharp liner to left. Two down. Candiotti only at 71 pitches has not walked anybody today. And Trammell flies out the center. All right. Nothing but righties here in the eighth. So we're going to take out Capizzello. Good job by him. Oh, man, I hate bringing in Tom Hume. I mean, he's been so good, but uh, he is due to get blowed up. 1-0, 305 ERA. Uh, 21 strikeouts and 41 in each pitch. Puts made 243 against him. But most importantly about Tom Hume, is he gets um, lefties out as well as he does righties. So you can count on him in uh, just about any situation. Ed Romero, one for two with a walk today. Will lead off the inning. Popping it up on the infield between first and second. Who's got it? Looks like Lou. One down. Next up is Paul Mulder. Mulder strikes out. The heavy hitter striking him out. And Randy Azador, 0 for 3 on the day. And there's the base hit into center field. Eight hits from the Brew Crew. Next up is Chet Lemon. Lemon's got a hit today. A ground ball to Lou. Lou throws him out. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Kevin Bass leading off. Bass, Henderson, and Hatcher. Bass lines out to second. Molitor makes the play. One down. We're back to Ricky. And Ricky strikes out looking. All right, two out rally. We need to hear starting with Hatcher. Let's go, Hatcher. Hey, ground ball. It gets past the first baseman. 141 feet. Okay, so Hatcher gets a hit. Only five hits for Detroit. But, Greg Brock is up. Brock, two for three. Double home run. Struck, him, struck out earlier. And he rips it right at Milder for out number three. And we are going to the ninth inning. And we're going to bring in Dreamweaver. Weaver has just been outstanding. He gets everybody out. Uh, he's having a career year. Uh, I mean, his career ERA is under three. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, two and four in the season, 185 ERA. 11 out of 12 in save opportunities. Um, he actually has more strikeouts than walks, and we, he did have an intentional walk. I think it was in yesterday's game. So, I don't know. Uh, the numbers are deceiving. Here's a uh, Dave Sachs, 0 for 2 with a stolen base. And he walks in. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, do we guard the line? Is he, he's not going to steal. Now we're going to play double play depth with Alan Cockrell up. And Cockrell takes strike three, three looking 74 mile an hour curve. Froze, froze Cockrell. <laughs> Next up is Charlie Moore. Moore popping it up. Working that curveball. Two down as Trammell makes the play. Now Loman does have some power. And um, we do have some lefties in the bullpen. Uh, okay, we're going to... Oh gosh, this seems regrettable. Um, no, we're not going to do it. We're playing smart ball. We're going to bring in Rucker. Rucker does get righties out really well, too, so he might have to go another inning if we get free baseball today. Here's Doug Loman. Rucker. And Loman hits a ground ball to short. That'll do it. 
Okay, we have another chance to walk it off. Candiotti still in there. He's throwing a Greg Maddox-like game. 89 pitches here in the ninth. Reggie's going to lead it off. He's 0 for 3 on the day with a strikeout. 1-0 count. And he hits a ground ball to second. So not a good game for Reggie. He's going to bring up Gibby. Gibby rips it into right. There's a base hit. Gibson's second hit. Do we want to go for two? Hell yeah, we do. Yes! Oh, come on! Son of a biscuit. Cockrell throws out Gibby at second. I mean, we're going for the jugular, you know? And that's going to leave it to Parrish. Parrish rolls it over to short. That'll do it. Okay, we're going to the ninth inning. Got some free baseball. It's all tied at two. Rucker is going to stay in the game. I'm going to let him go this inning. He's going to start off by facing Bob Scooby. Scooby over three with a walk today. Lines out to short. One down. Oh boy, Ed Romero. Pull the outfield in for him. Batting 346. So this is left handers and a base hit up the middle. That was an obvious result. So Romero now two for four today. I can't imagine he would be stealing with Paul Molitor up. We gotta guard the lines now. Against Molitor. And I called it, but uh, I guess it didn't matter. As Molitor gets a double anyway. I mean, I, I guessed right. It's his 10th double. And now we're in real trouble. Obviously, we walk at Ozador here. To get to Chester Lemon. And we don't have any more righties in the bullpen. Now, Lemon's batting 341. against left-handers. We're pulling the infield in. We'll go home if we have the opportunity. 2-1 count. Popping it up. Good job by Rucker. Whitaker makes the play, and now it's going to be up to Dave Sachs. Hitless today. Everybody's playing straight away now. We're not even going to hold the runners on. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, this is it. 20 pitches for Rucker now. And a base hit. Four to two, Brew Crew. That's 11 hits for the Brewers. And another hit. Well, this will mess up your ERA, that's for sure. And Charlie Moore pops out. So we took our chances, and uh, it backfired on us today. I think we've won, what, five in a row? So I guess we can't win them all. Now, I thought that yesterday, too, if we did actually come back and win. Candiotti's still in there in the 10th inning. He's not even throwing 100 pitches. So um, I guess Whitaker strikes out. Trammell gets a home run. That is his seventh on the year. Yep. Gets this one run closer. Now we need to get somebody on base. All right. We're going to let Kevin Bass be that guy. Oh, they're going to bring in Frank DePino. Uh, he's got nine saves uh, in 12 opportunities, two and four, with a 5.86 ERA. So this is the guy. Let's take care of them. We got a bunch of righties coming up too. Kevin Bass, first guy up. Ah, oh, ground ball to first. Well, we are down to our final out now. We got Ricky up. Ricky's batting 329 versus left-handers, and he lines out to right. That's the ball game. We do get one in the tenth. That's a home run by Trammell, but Tigers lose five to three. We ran out of relievers. That was a little bit of mismanagement on my part. 
We were just one pitch of getting out of that, though. No trade offers today. We'll take a look at the standings. New York leapfrogs over Baltimore. They are six back. Baltimore loses. They go to seven. And uh, Kansas City holding steady at eight and a half games. Let's take a look at the National League, just for the hell of it. New York and Philadelphia battling it out on top. Um, and really, wow, look at it. F five teams within one and a half games, so anybody can win the East. And Cincinnati is running away with it. It's not even close. Take a look at transactions. Everybody's retiring. Stan Bonsenburner is retiring. He hasn't pitched since 1980, the first uh, year of our sim. So at age 37, Montreal buying out his contract. And Kent Ticulvi, side armor or submariner, I'm not sure what you would call him. I feel like he's retiring a little early. Uh, was not pitching this season, but uh, he did pitch the last two years for Pittsburgh. That seems a little early. But, oh, well, he's age 35. All right, so. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and or subscribe if you haven't done it before. At least hit the like button for me. That's a nice thing to do. Tigers hit a couple home runs. Uh, Greg Brock, player of the game, no doubter. A double and a home run. His sixth and twelfth of the year. Trammell gets the, the garbage time r home run, his seventh. Dave Rucker takes the loss. His ERA balloons to 237. Youch. Tom Candiotti probably deserves a complete game. He went nine and a third innings to get his eighth win of the season. Frank DePino gets his tenth save. Paul Motter had two doubles. Um, Milwaukee one for three on stolen bases. Detroit... Gibby had one, and Ricky, of course, got thrown out. So, uh, and Bruce Robbins didn't pitch too badly, right? We gave him a little mention. That's going to do it for today. We're going to come back tomorrow with game two of the three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great day.